I want to tell you guys about the thing that I think kills keto and carnivore for more people who might be willing to try it than just about anything. Hey guys, Chris Cook in Nashville here. I've got my weekly health vlog and conversational update for you today. So very briefly, my health is good. I'm feeling really good. I hit a new low weight. I'm not weighing every week, but I did decide to this week because I just was feeling good and felt like I should. And I was at 252.9, so 253 pounds. That means that's a total of 132 pounds of weight loss since the largest that I know that I was and if you've watched my health vlogs before, you know that I I know I was 385, but I was probably bigger than that at some point. So, you know, I was probably more like 400 pounds at one point. So I am unbelievably happy every time I look at the scale. And even if, you know, I haven't lost weight for a few weeks or even a month or two, that's just kind of the natural progression of weight loss that doesn't bother me. And I'm just reminded every time I see the number on the scale, even if it hasn't moved in you know a little while, I'm reminded of how much of a difference that is in my life. And I'm reminded of all of the great health things that are going on where I feel better. It just makes a huge difference. So with February, I have a new challenge for myself. You guys know if you watched my videos in January, I wanted to cut back on my coffee consumption and I've done that. So this right here is what I used to put my coffee in and I don't do that anymore. I used to have way too much coffee. Now my coffee goes in this and I have basically two shots of espresso in the morning with a little bit of heavy cream put my keto chow daily minerals in that because I love using a little bit of those every day and I put some iodine drops in there a little bit of heavy cream and some espresso shots two of them to be specific and that's it that's all the coffee that I have which is basically 20 percent of the coffee that I was drinking so 80 percent of my coffee consumption has been cut out and I'm feeling really good about that that also reduces the amount of cream that I use, which means, you know, I generally only eat one meal a day, but I do get, you know, a few calories if you worry about calories, which I don't really, but if you want to think of it that way, I do get a few of those in the morning from the heavy cream, and now I have drastically reduced that as well. So I'm feeling really good, and everything is good there. I've completed that challenge. I went from way too much coffee all the way down, and I'm consistent, and I'm sticking with that. I'm not letting myself have extra. If for some reason I was super tired and I felt like I needed a little bit of a boost before a show or you know something like that, if we were going to go play and sing and I needed something like that, I would maybe do like a little bit of green tea or something, but I'm not going to do that unless I absolutely have to. And I'm avoiding that coffee addiction. So that is the success of January. So for February, I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to add in something physical. I don't necessarily feel like I need to just hardcore hit the gym exercise all the time. Although I would love to, you know, get to where exercise was a regular part of my day but that's not necessarily something when you're that overweight and experiencing all of those physical issues on your joints and all that kind of stuff that you can do. You know, when you're really heavy like that, you can't just incorporate that exercise right away. Now I'm at a point where I can incorporate more exercise type things now because of all the weight that I've lost, but my body is not used to some of that stuff. So I wanna be careful about how I do it. So I thought, what could I do here in February? So what I'm doing is a jumping jacks challenge. And I know that that can be a little bit hard on some joints. So, you know, you have to be careful about this. If you guys wanna do something similar to this, it doesn't have to be jumping jacks. It can be anything. It can be stand up and sit down out of your chair. It can be go up and down the stairs in your house. It can be whatever it is that you want, but start with something small figure out one thing that you can do that is physical and figure out how much of it you can do to where you start to get tired and out of breath and do it every single day. And so what I'm doing is I've found that if I do it in a couple of batches, I can get to about a hundred jumping jacks in a day and I get a little bit out of breath. My heart rate is up, you know, makes my legs and my arms a little tired to do it because I, I do them fairly aggressively. That is a really good mild amount of exercise that gets my body moving, gets my blood pumping, but doesn't require a lot of time. I can do it anywhere I need to. I can do it inside if the weather's bad. 
because I'm trying to slowly build a habit. And I think this is one of the things that we have to understand with keto and carnivore and changing our lives and getting rid of addictions. If you try to do this too fast and you try to force yourself to flip a switch overnight, you may be a person who can do that. You may have the determination and the self-discipline to do that. And if you do, I think that's fantastic. But a lot of us don't. And, you know, there are certain things maybe I do, and then there's certain things I don't. And exercise is one of those things where I don't think I have the determination and the self-discipline to just go work out super hard and make myself overly sore and take that time out of my day and still commit to it and maybe lose on some sleep because I have to get up earlier to make sure I have time. And there's so many layers to doing it that way from the outset that I feel like I would set myself up to fail. So if I do some jumping jacks, then I can kind of incorporate it wherever I can in my day. And as long as I hit my hundred a day, I don't care if I do all hundred at the same time, if I do 50 and then 50 later on, if I do 10, 10, 10, you know, 10 times, I don't care. As long as I hit a hundred jumping jacks in a day, I'm good with that. So I'm going to do that for the entire month of February. And, you know, I'm not going to like kill myself or push myself. I'm going to take my time doing it but just to get in the habit of doing some physical thing every single day. And I made a small achievable goal and I'm going to do that every single day. And by the end of February, if I feel like, you know, I'm getting to where I can do say 120, 150 a day, whatever, if I want to add extra on, that's great. I'll push myself a little bit, but I'm not going to kill myself because I don't want to set myself up to fail or feel like I can't keep up with a goal that I set. So I'm going to set a goal that pushes me just a little bit and I'm going to achieve it. And then in March, we'll step up with another goal. And so I'm building myself a set of health goals this entire year. And I will have completed all 12 challenges by the end of 2024. And I will continue to incorporate all of these changes. So once I do the 100 jumping jacks a day in February, I hope to continue that just going forward or at the very least be replacing it with something that pushes me harder. So that's my goal for February. That is my challenge to myself is to do 100 jumping jacks. If you guys want to start doing these challenges with me, um, I'll start talking about them ahead of the month when I do them. So if you want to try to either do it with me or if you want to come up with your own version of it and tell me in the comments how it's going, whatever, you can keep up. But for February, some small physical thing that you know you can do, you know you can achieve. It fits into your lifestyle and your schedule, but it pushes you a little bit and do it just every day just to get your body moving, whether it's stretching, jumping jacks, push-ups and sit-ups, whatever it is you want to do, uh, whatever it is your body can handle. That's for February. So that's what we're doing. So I wanted to talk to you guys a minute about this perspective that I think sometimes can kill the ability to do keto or carnivore faster than anything I have seen when it comes to convincing people to try this out. One of the things that I'm really passionate about is not only doing keto and carnivore for myself, but teaching about keto and carnivore because obviously I cook and I create recipes and I do all this kind of stuff. And even if it's just a steak, I can make a better steak than just about anybody I know. And using cooking techniques as a way to make your food really good and to thoroughly enjoy it, I think is really helpful with keto and carnivore because we already have limited things that we can eat anyway, and it makes it so much more enjoyable to just be good at doing it. So I love teaching that. But one of the other things that I like to do is try to inspire other people to try keto, to try carnivore, especially if they're willing to try carnivore, because for me, that's that's the path, that's the way. But just to help people take back their own health and to get things under control by convincing them that this is not as bad as it seems. But something very interesting happened. I posted my salmon recipe video, which I'm going to link up here for you guys if you haven't seen it yet. It's, uh, it's a simple way of doing salmon, and you can do this with any kind of fish, really, but salmon is great for those omega-3s and, you know, these kinds of things. I did this salmon recipe, and something that I thought was really interesting is I had all these people in the comments section, and when I say people in the comments section, I don't mean like brand new people in the comments section. I mean like regular followers of mine that I recognize their names, and a whole bunch of people went on there, and they all started talking about like, farmed salmon versus wild salmon and like all these kinds of things and and realize like I get it the the farmed salmon is not 
going to be nearly as good for you as, say, a wild-caught salmon will, and you have to be careful of your source because there can be, you know, some toxic junk and some things in salmon and, and you know, that kind of stuff. Like, I totally get it. But they went in the comment section, some of these people, and they just started blasting on the whole farmed salmon thing, and, and not even in, like, a way of, like, they're expressing it. I mean, this visceral, emotional reaction to farm salmon is terrible, and it's so toxic, and you better be eating wild cod, and this is horrible for you. I mean, and, and it's like, they went off on this kind of stuff. And now I'm not arguing that wild caught salmon is better or worse or any of that. I get it. Wild caught salmon is definitely going to be healthier for you than farmed salmon. But the thing that really stood out to me about this, and this is something that I want to just put out there for thought for you guys and see what you think about. But from my perspective, what really stood out is that I used to eat Twinkies and Ding Dongs and Ho-Hos and fast food and massive amounts of carbs, pizza and pasta and burgers with buns and sauces and sugar and rice and bread and I mean like all of this different kind of stuff. And I weighed 400 pounds, give or take. And I was extremely sick and I was dealing with depression and anxiety and all of these different kinds of things. Like I was on my way to diabetes and a heart attack or a stroke or cancer or any of these other kinds of things. I was absolutely killing myself with a horrible, horrible addiction to all of these foods that are terrible for me. So I put out a recipe as I've gotten my health under control about salmon. And there's still people in the community that think the first thing they need to do is come randomly jump down my throat about the difference between farmed and wild caught and all this different kind of stuff, which has nothing to do with the video. It has nothing to do with the point of that video. The point of that video is all about an easy way to cook salmon for people who really like that and want to get the omega-3s in their diet. Here's a great way to do it that tastes really good and it can be customized with seasoning to fit whatever version of a keto or carnivore diet you are on, whatever. And it really stood out to me. This is one of the reasons that so many people think keto and carnivore is something they can't do or something they don't want to do or they have such an emotional reaction to it because... Quite honestly, if we freak out over every little detail about everything like that, like from the outset, like if you're going to do keto and carnivore, you got to give up all of these foods and all of these things, and you also can't have farmed salmon, and you can't have any beef unless it's grass fed, and you can't. When you start doing this to people, not only are you making it difficult for them to ever see a future where they don't eat all of the same junk food and the different things that they're used to eating, but now you're making it impossible because they have to find the very most elite versions of all of the meats and they have to spend all the money that it takes to get all of these most elite versions of all of these meats. I mean, we're beating people over the head with everything that we think they should do. And the reason I'm talking about this is because it's not just some of the people in my comment section. I see this in videos and I see this all over the internet everywhere in the keto and carnivore community. And I'm not arguing that somehow wild caught salmon isn't better than farmed. And I'm not arguing that maybe there aren't things in farm salmon that's not good for us. I agree, it probably is that way. But who's gonna come pay my bills if I spend all of my money on wild caught salmon and grass fed beef and then I can't figure out how to pay for my rent? Who is going to figure out all of the logistics in my life if I have to drive somewhere all the way across town to go somewhere to find some wild-caught salmon and grass-fed beef of some kind when I don't have the time to do it on a particular day? Who's going to take care of the fact that if I'm out to eat someplace and I choose to get a steak or salmon or something at a restaurant because it's on keto or carnivore what I'm trying to follow, if that's not wild-caught salmon or that's grass-fed beef, who's going to be the one to say, well, you got to go to this other restaurant where they serve the wild-caught or the grass-fed version, and now it's three times the price? Who's figuring all of this out for someone? Because no one's here figuring it out for me. I've got to do it myself. I've got to provide for my family. I've got to make the best decisions that I can. So, yeah, a lot of times I eat farmed salmon and I eat cheap beef. It's not because I think that's the best way of doing it. It's because it's the only way I can do it and sustain it right now.
I'm just putting this out there and I'd love to hear what you guys think. I'm putting this out there though. Do you really think for those people who say those kinds of things, do you really think you're helping anybody who isn't already on keto and carnivore and isn't already good at doing this? Do you think you're helping any of them by beating them over the head and telling them not only do they have to change all of these habits in their life, but then criticizing them if they don't do it the way that you think they should do it because it's not wild caught salmon, it's not grass fed beef, it's not grass fed butter, it's not this, it's not that, it's not something else. Do you hear how annoying that is when I start doing that, just talking on the video here? Because as someone who honestly, I feel like I'm pretty stable doing my carnivore diet and I'm pretty successful losing 132 pounds and I've built this channel and I've helped a lot of people, I find it really annoying when people think that it's their place to come in the comments section and tell me what I should be doing, how I should be doing it, and then beating me over the head if they think I'm not living up to their expectations of it. So imagine if you're someone who's looking for the chance to change their lives using keto and carnivore and they're considering doing this and the very first thing that they experience is one of us who maybe is further down that path than they are immediately beating them over the head and telling them how everything is wrong. Is that really something that we should be doing? Because as far as I can tell, that's not about helping people. That's about making yourself feel good and trying to dictate to someone else how to run their life. You want to talk about the thing that makes keto and carnivore seem crazy to people and hurts our cause and hurts our movement and hurts our community more than anything? It's people with an attitude like that. If you want to promote wild-caught salmon and you want to promote grass-fed beef, I think that's great. And I think that's something that should be done. And I think we should all be working to try to get the best and highest quality of these things we can and support local business where we can get these things and try to affect change. But doing it because of narcissism and because of a need to elevate ourselves above other people and make ourselves feel superior and elite, and especially to come on my YouTube channel if I'm one of your favorite creators and to beat me over the head about the fact that I'm using salmon that to you doesn't look wild caught. That's not how you change anything. And I think it's one of the things that is killing the effectiveness and keto and carnivore in terms of getting it outside of the community. I think the fact that as many people try it as do is testament to just how effective keto and carnivore can be because there are still so many vocal people in the community that believe if you're not doing it the elite way and perfect meat, salt, water, everything wild caught, everything grass fed, spending hundreds of dollars on every single thing that you get, they think you're doing it wrong and you deserve to be criticized and bashed for it. The fact that people can get beyond that and still give this a try tells you just how incredible keto and carnivore can be in changing people's lives. So I just want to put it out there and say for those of you who watch my channel and follow what I do, Yes, wild caught is the best and grass fed is the best in terms of the health effects and all these kinds of things. And I think that's the direction we should all move. But for goodness sakes, people show some kindness, show some people that you care more about their health than you do about finding reasons to beat them down for not being as good at it as you are, because that's just sad. It really, really is. And honestly, I was really caught off guard by the fact that I posted a recipe and that many people who are regular followers of mine immediately jumped into harping on farmed salmon or bashing me for not using wild caught or any of these kinds of things. And it's like, I didn't promote farmed salmon. I just used it because quite honestly, that's what I can afford. And it really is shocking sometimes, even now, when I post things, how people who claim to enjoy what I do, still are looking for any detail that they can where they can use it to show me how what I'm doing is not good enough. It's honestly heartbreaking because our community is better than that most of the time. Most of the people here, I think, are a lot better than that. But the people that do that kind of stuff, that breaks my heart. And not for me. I mean, I find it annoying, but it's not because it's for me. I've already got stability and changing my life and all of this kind of stuff in my head. Like, like I've already done the hard yards to get where I am and I'm just working to move forward. 
and I've got the confidence in the platform that helps support me in the ability to do it. As there are a lot of struggling people out there who don't know how much of a life-changing experience this can be. They're fat, they're sick, they're nearly dead, they're experiencing health issues, they have no confidence, they're struggling and dying. And here are the vocal people in our community beating everybody up for what they do that's not perfect. I think my farmed salmon is a whole lot better than my Twinkies and my Ding Dongs and everything else that I used to eat that made me 400 pounds. It may not be the most elite version, it may not be the best way to get there, but if right now it's the way that I can afford and it's improving my health and it's helping me save my life, then I think it's okay and I think everyone who has an issue with it needs to learn to calm down and love other people more than they love themselves. Just some food for thought today. Thank you to all of you guys who are always here in the community and being supportive to each other. We all need to lift each other up and we all need to help each other be better at doing this. It's the only way we're going to succeed is together. And there's so many people out there that need the truth about what keto and carnivore can do for their lives. And they need it delivered in a way that is understanding and kind and gives them options and flexibility so that they can get better at it a little at a time and not feel like they're going to be judged and beaten up if they can't do it the exact right way from the very beginning. Thank you to those of you who are those kinds of people. You are the reason keto and carnivore succeed and you guys are the reason that Chris Cooking Nashville is here. I really appreciate you guys. I love all of you. Tell me in the comments below what you think and uh, make sure to go watch some of my recipe videos. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch that salmon video because whether you use wild caught or farm salmon, it tastes absolutely fantastic. And I think if you guys like your salmon, you're going to enjoy that one. This is Chris Cook in Nashville. Thank you guys for watching. Eat your meat, love your life, and I'm going to see you in the kitchen for the next recipe.